two, two, two. I think that sounds more lucky. <laughs> yeah, you can drive manually. Um, can we go point five, Dan? Um, happy with point three. Oh, okay, we're happy with point three. Okay. Point five sideways is. He's gonna change the heading. All right. So I need to head two two five. Two two two. To confirm, Megan, we're starting at the end of transect seven. Yeah, we're starting at the end of transect seven, which yeah. is about three hundred meters away. Like kind of northwestish. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, it's southwest, but. You see that little okay. blue blob of dots up there, Danny? Yes. That's where the ROV is. Okay. I can get Megan to reset oh, yeah. her DVL. Yeah, let me, uh, hold on. Go ahead. All right, there you go. Okay. So we'll just uh, step forward again. You want to get, uh, you want to be in front of Atalanta when it starts moving. So I would go south or southeast. I am heading 225. Wait, you you want to be lined up with Atalanta gotcha. when it starts moving 225. So if you turn to the south, southeast. Zipping along. Slow down. It's too fast. Stop and smell some flowers. <laughs> They're like, do donuts. Here, I will do this. I'll turn Atalanta to 225. <laughs> Looks about right. Okay, I can turn and burn on two two five there. Oh no, you're going too fast. Well, this isn't a visual transect, unfortunately. I wanted to zoom it. Yeah. Two two five. Two two five. That's the other direction. Yeah, that's this way. <laughs> I'm looking at. Well, I wanted to look at one of those C pens. Get a good look at their polyps. Yeah, I want to look at the polyps. Let's get some beauty shots. We got like 20 minutes before we go somewhere. Yeah, I want to stay in your box there, so. Okay. Are we officially not transecting at the moment? We are not transecting. We ended the transect. So the problem is I don't know exactly where the zoom What's yeah, that? Could be a day. That could be a don't problem. Don't know where the zoom is? I don't know where the zoom is. There is no readout that tells us where the lens is focally. Oh, well, I know what Fabio I know where the said zoom is. to set it back at this, I don't know, this uh, field of view. If you slowly zoom out, yep. you'll see the... Yep. Uh, where it is. Yeah, you'll see yep. the bottom of the gizmos appear there in the bottom right corner okay. of the screen. Um, I know where my iris is. I've got a number there, so, um, but, okay. Did uh, Ed maybe leave some notes behind? No, I, I, well, yes, I talked to him, but there is no numerical value to where the zoom yeah. is on the Yeah, there lines. is. We'll we, look at that thing. You'll, you'll see, see when you zoom a little white thing up. up there? But not a number, that's what I'm trying to say. So What's that? Not a number. There is no, like, I can't just dial it in, so I'll look at it here. Okay, stand by. Okay, I got that. It's painfully obvious. So yep, yep. I got that. <laughs> You'll have, yeah, no, so you can still see those little gizmos at the bottom? Yep, just past so those. So you were zoomed just past that yep. for yep. the transect. Like right, right there. there. Yep, yep. No, yeah. I got that. Cool. Thank you. So, uh, 
don't move the camera, Danny. I'm not moving the, the camera. Right. Zoom in video. The reason is so uh, we can get the same zoom reference for the next transect. So. Yep, that makes sense. I'm just going to keep this uh, heading and... Uh, And don't change your altitude either. I don't want to stuff the ROV in the mud. So. Okay, I'm just going to go forward and uh, backwards then. Yeah, we don't want to crap it up for the video transect. Got that thing hanging underneath you, too. Can you go into the drawer okay, zoom wide. and look for tape? Wonderful, thanks. Press tape. So that's me going away from a. Uh, yeah. Whoa. It's a lot of tape. You're pulling Atalanta around there. Okay, I'll just. You can wag your tail back and forth so you can zigzag. Video, can you go back to uh, standard zoom? Yep. Oh, there's my friend. I was trying to figure out what that thing is. What thing? That the white thing. Just like the trail? No, this little white guy. Little over. Slimer. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were looking at the trail thing. No, no, that little little translucent guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jelly blob. He's floating. Is yeah. he alive even? Uh, it looks alive. I see. I saw a number of them on the transect, and I didn't know what they were, because they didn't look like. Cucumbers. Could they be a salp of video. some kind? Yeah. I mean, it looks like a benthic animal. Uh, to me, it just looks like it's it might be floating a on the... Huh. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's a ductor to the bottom there. It, well, they're attached to the bottom. I saw a number of them doing exactly the same thing. Okay. But they're just, they're not cucumbers. So there's another bug in this system. If you um, deflect the joystick while you're in auto XY, it stacks and um, it doesn't work like auto heading where it doesn't work like it should. Basically, you can't fly the vehicle while yeah. Oh, you're in auto XY. It's supposed to, um, when you move the stick, you have uh, velocity control of the vehicle. And when you let off, it should grab that position and hold it. It doesn't do that. When you move the stick, it's the same as going step forward, step forward, step forward. So as long as you're moving the stick, you're incrementing your go-to your to go, <coughs> something to be aware of. If you have it in auto XY and you're trying to move the stick around, you let go of the stick, it'll keep going. It's like you put in a to go point. Oh, okay. It's a bug, it's a known bug. We're trying to. What's that clump? So the DVL is. It's wood. Gone okay. wonky again. You're actually in front of Atlanta there. You have any worms in it? Probably. Okay. You want to reset <laughs> my DBL? Sure thing. Oh. It's kind of spiky. Um, someone's asking about uh, data. Um, if you're on the Nautilus Live main page, there is off to the side of the videos, live data, and then you can click on more data for the information you're requesting. So in auto heading, I can like adjust slowly. And you can, lock so in. depending on what you put here for uh, So right now it's changing at with a five velocity degree. of 10 in five degree steps. So
So it's kind of fast. If you change those two numbers, it will change its behavior in auto head. Okay. So the 10 is the max rate of turn, likely in degrees per second. Um, that's stepping in five degree increments, supposedly. Ooh. That's an enemy. Look at that guy. Yeah, go look at that guy. He's a big guy. <laughs> Tall guy. Whoa. See cucumber Hello. photo bomb. Hello. In slow mo. Hey pilots, just to confirm, did did we do all the prep work already for uh, removal of that mooring? Yeah, all I gotta do is cut it loose. Okay. Or yeah, that shouldn't take too long, really. Um, we did it in maybe 10 minutes of, of arriving on site um, for the last one. So. The only fly in that ointment could be um, if the ROV needs to come in at a particular heading to access the... Go ahead, video. Uh, the, to get access to the cutters. Okay. For example, when we had to come and to get access to the connectors. Yeah. Uh, we had to step the vehicle all the way around the mooring, which took probably half an hour. Right. So I forget, I, uh, Jake might remember what that heading was. It's so pretty. Or if you have any pictures, you can look back and see what that it's heading was. Yeah, maybe yeah, uh, a little scale worm. I'll, I'll keep an eye out. So he turned to us, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, you remember what your heading was, Jake? Are you online back there? Oh, here we go. I didn't even see him. Oh, yeah. He's camouflaged. Yep, I just I want to say it was... You can see how happy it is with those little <laughs> wavy bits. West, southwest. southwest. Go wide video. That anemone, like, squished down. Yeah, and then so <laughs> if we approach they might have caught the something from this oh. heading... Yeah then we shouldn't have to monkey about, which I, yeah, I think that rings a bell. I thought we walked Atlanta around this, yeah, southeast. Southeast, okay. So if we approach it from the northwest, then we won't have to walk around it. Okay. But, but that'll, yeah, that'll be the other ship's call on how they want to approach it and set up the boat. So, yeah, I would. It's probably 50 50 whether they want to move the vessel around to get in an optim optimal runaway position. And they'll probably also want to stretch Atlanta out, you know, stretch Hercules. So they want to have. Atlanta between the boat and Hercules and be all stretched out in a recovery mm -hmm. kind of tail to tail guy. situation. Ooh, that's where a nice line. Yeah. Start, I would yeah. imagine. Zoom I would out. be. Go ahead yeah. zoom in video. So pretty. Yeah, that one is quite delicate looking, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay, Danny, time to mosey on. You're getting run over. Okay. <laughs> Gonna make me actually work over here. We know you don't like that. <laughs> you mean you have to lean forward? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's I was in quite fast there. So yeah. you get out about three boxes out, then you can stop and smell flowers. That's a legit technique for you kind of run out to the top of your box there. Okay. Yeah, I better speed. There's a hole. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, if you if you get some tether in the bank, as we call it, then you can stop and smell the flowers before you get run over. You could probably run out a little further than that. That's looking straight down nope, there. I'm going. I'm just getting a feel of uh, when it engages. Basically, I'll run it out till it starts tugging, and then I'll slow down and look for something cool to look at. Then you have more time to look at it, but we do a lot of that kind of uh, during the science cruise when we're like traveling up the sea mounts. That's a good technique to to practice so you stay out towards the end of your tether because as soon as you're out there the back row will want to stop and look at something or sample something while the boat's moving so now should them. i should i make the end of this transect that we're going to do it's end on the uh, sheet or to the mooring what's that oh no, we'll stick to the coordinates. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And since the boat's changed its heading all around, plan on uh, at least 20 meters, maybe 40 offset. Yep. So we might change it again when we start heading back. Yeah. I really wish I had a velocity to see. You do. You got like. You got like speed over grin. Four of them. <laughs> uh, feet over ground where. The vessel is doing 0.3. Okay. So Atlanta's doing 0.3. Mm -hmm. Plus water drag and everything else. No, I, I'm just saying if I had a, a. Never mind. You know what I mean. Yeah, a readout. A readout I could match my, my yeah, stick to. Yeah, Green Seas has that, has a speed over ground. Yeah, speed over ground would be amazing. You get to know what it what it is, but one of the analogies I use is on this boat. So the 10 meters a minute is you know walking across the deck takes a minute. Mm -hmm. So do it once and kind of look down at your feet and see how fast it's going by. Should go by the same here. But you can also kind of you know look figure out what your field of view is and count the mentally count the seconds after a while it'll oh, I'm sure you won't have to think about it at all <laughs> I have noticed when uh, new pilots sit down they go the first thing they do is hit the end of the tether almost every time <laughs> <laughs> well every dog does that too you got to see where your energy release is. Yeah, exactly. It's like, what are my boundaries? And you don't even need the uh, Atlanta page up. You can see the Atlanta. You'll start to notice out of the corner of your eye, the Atlanta compass start walking. But the other thing I look at too is the tail, is the uh, bow in my tether. But that's not always a good tail because if we got strong currents, it'll do, it'll behave differently. But you kind of go ahead, video. This one isn't as hungry. No. But yeah, look at those. Oh yeah, see now you can see those little... Uh, the grabbers. Yeah, little grabbers you got. They got like little balls on the ends, little sticky balls. Why does he have one swollen leg? Uh, there's a parasite. 
Uh, I need to go to the drugstore. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that's an infection? Uh, it's probably not a bacterial thing. It's probably like an actual like parasite, like a worm or, ah. or something underneath there. Yeah. Probably the one I look at the most, Danny, is um, the nav screen. Yeah, that seems to have a good uh, understanding of uh, distance. Yeah, I used a little. That's why I like the boxes set on 10 meter squares. It's still partially zoomed. kind of reference in my reptile this, brain, I yeah. reference where Atlanta is in relation to the boat, and I reference where Herc is in relation to Atlanta. So the boat's behind us, or no? No, the boat's, boat's at way in front of you. Yeah. Oh, gotcha, the boat took off, and then we... The boat's uh, over here. Yeah. Gotcha. And then uh, Atlanta's doing the swing, and we're following. Yeah, I like well, to know. Like cucumber. I like yeah. to know what the layback is the all one. the time, because if we're coming up on something, like if I see some terrain in my sonar, and and uh, you know that's the Atlanta sonar looks out 100 meters. So if you're 50 meters behind the boat, so if we had to stop, you're full wide, gang. I really like the. Uh, Atlanta sonar. Um, that's something. Yeah, it's not a big deal out here in the flat, but. Um, no, but being it, able to see around your TMS or yeah, your. Yeah, but something so we always need to watch is if you know what your layback is all the time and you see something in uh, coming up in uh, Atlanta sonar, you need to stop the boat, otherwise you're going to swing into it, right? Yeah. And then, yeah, I, that's how my brain processes it. There you go. There's an octopus. Ooh. Yeah, he's all curled up. Well, good thing I got some uh, tether in the bank. Yeah. He can actually do a, take it out of auto heading and do a pirouette around him. <laughs> One of the things that I like to do, come up, fly, and then keep moving the whole time and do a pirouette around them, get at least 180 video. Okay, go ahead and zoom video. And I find it easier to keep the, whatever you're looking at, to do a slow pirouette. I find it easier to keep that in the screen if the vehicle's slowly moving as opposed to, and I think it makes better video too. Yeah. As opposed to sitting there trying to watch it in one spot and it's bouncing all over. If you're moving around it, it you got more control of the vehicle and it makes cooler video. Go ahead and zoom in. Mm. Oh, little ones get nervous. Oh. Get the lasers out of the eye. <laughs> you guys had a uh, little fellow uh, earlier today. Yeah, yesterday. for a long time. Oh, Danny. Oh. What? You lasered him in the eye. Yeah, you take the lasers off. Oh, you think the laser hurts him? Um, and you should have time to... Can't be good for him. ...lateral back around at least halfway before you have to turn and burn. You can zoom in video. Walking octopus. Usually, I love when they walk like that. It's so cool. Usually after the first half turn, it's... Starting to dust it up. Very neat. Oh, 
Don't worry, little guy. I ain't gonna crush you. And if Advent is getting too close, like it is, you can always zoom off. You don't have to zoom off in like the exact same heading. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll walk around quite a bit out there in my box. Okay. Wag your tail, as uh, some people call it. If you want to go fast, you can cover more ground uh, doing a zigzag pattern out in front. Make a nice sine wave out in front of Atalanta. Yeah, I figure by the time that we get to the halfway point of this transect, AJ should be up anyway, so he can give us directives on uh, whether to cut that last part off or go straight to the uh, mooring from that location. I think it, that's a pretty good position to approach from. So, okay, yeah. we'll see. Uh, we'll see what he has to say when the time comes. Because so I imagine, yeah, it'll be probably what just around three o'clock by the time we get to that midway uh, point yeah it'll yeah that sounds right yeah so assuming he expects us to be on site at that point he can then decide what to do from there yeah i just there's no way we can get on site by yeah. three it's no i get it happen. we're yep. too far away yep On site at four sounds good to me. He'll mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. be asleep anyway. I will be. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Oh, a sea pen. Let's look at it. Yeah. If we got a little time. Oh, yeah, we got some time. Got all time. That's interesting in this. There must be. Well, there's definitely Go ahead, video. quite a bit of current to the north here. Are you talking about this uh, white thing? Yeah. Go ahead, so video. So if it has parent polyps, then it's patella. If it has single polyps, um, then it uh, has the single polyps. So it's the, like, so along these, like, pinules, these, like, sort of, feather structures. There's only one polyp uh, across in a line across that area. So um, that is, it also starts with P. Um, I, go I can't remember the name. Zoom in on that guy in video. These guys are crazy looking. Panachula. Yeah. That, that's the name. Panachula. Panachula. Mm -hmm. Okay, video. Go ahead. Full wide. See, that's good to know, because uh, you wouldn't have been able to see that in the video transect. But now we know. Mm-hmm. Because both of those uh, genera can live in the same spot, so the only way to tell is to actually get a view of the polyps.
ship's almost at our destination. Oh, look at that star. It's got two really long arms and all a bunch of little short arms. Ah. Yeah, do these guys, like, eject their legs and grow them back? Yeah, they can do that. Yeah. So at one point, they lost like most five, of their arms. five arms. <laughs> <laughs> Six arms. Go ahead and video. Would have been a really funky looking... Uh, yeah, that would have must have been tough. Yeah. Really like be a two-armed star. Yep. No, especially since that's how he eats. Yep. It's like, all it's right. Like, I'm not sure how quickly they can regenerate. <laughs> that's kind of cool, though. Yeah. Go live video. But imagine if you could regrow your arms. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. That'd be super useful. No more ACL surgery. Just, right. Just grow a new one. I think people would live their life with a little bit more reckless abandon, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've got a friend uh, I went to high school with who uh, lost an arm in a car accident. Mm. Hmm. Gave him a whole new outlook on life. So your uh, DVL is offset again, you're actually off to the south a bit there. wonder what made that formation. That's interesting. Bioturbation. Somebody's been digging holes. Probably like old burrows that have collapsed. Yeah. Do I need to head north a little bit? Is that what you're saying? No, just letting you know. Oh. You can zigzag out there in front as long as we're gonna. She's still in your box. If you were to correct that on a video transect or a manual one, I would just you start just sneaking a little out, yeah, or change your heading a little. And look, a smiley face. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Picasso style. <laughs> what, what are you is doing? On Herkbrow, what is this stuff that's flowing through here? Is that just... That's wild. It's a... Uh, Green snow. Cutter... Oh, some of the shadows there? Yeah, all of the debris that's floating down. What's that? I can barely hear you. It's just showing up through the lights. You can see it in the HD. I'm not sure what you're talking He's about. He's talking that's about right. the marine snow. Yes, what Danny said. Still can't hear you. Yeah, I can barely hear you too, P. Test one, two. Check, check, check. Way yeah. too quiet. Somebody must have turned down my predecessor. Because mm -hmm. I'm yeah, normal Ed, volume. Ed is like really loud. He comes in and he like... Yeah, you're all the way up. Yeah. I'm, Your volume must be low. So I'm talking. And that's where I'm at. Test well, one, two. Testing one, two, three, four. Oh, you Test one, two, three, four. Yeah, check, I check, check. Weird. I'll turn uh, myself up. I'm listening to you on two channels too, which yeah, usually makes too. you way louder. Everybody's getting crazy. I'm leaving you're, my uh, box. You're tugging now. Yep. Test one, two. I was counting three and I stopped. There was something over off to the right. Still quiet. Test. Test. That's a little better. There's like a fuzzy thing over there. 
The fuzzy thing? Yeah. See the fuzzy thing? Well, the thing poking Video, out of the ground? can you zoom in yeah. a little bit? That's good. Yeah. I think it's just a fuzzy thing. But we're down for another beautiful takeoff by this sea cucumber. <laughs> It's thinking about it. <laughs> Let's see, Oreo is uh, changing his head back yeah. around. I told him to change heading now while we get settled out. Are we almost to our destination? Yes, we are almost there. Herc's got not too far to go. Can you drop, I was going to say, can you drop a pin on my nav screen or where we're going? Or is that not a thing? Oh, yeah. These are two separate programs. I can't uh, just, like, put it down. That's no fun. Yeah, no. I'd love to have a destination to, uh... Um, so yeah. your destination is going to be right where the ship is. Uh, I get that. That's above your pay grade. All you get is a range of bearing. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> No, just drop a point. That's where you're headed. I don't care how you get there, that's where you're going. I guess the ship is uh, a I good could, uh, heading point. I, I could probably say that <laughs> Atlanta's going to keep that offset. Maybe it might come around as he changes his heading. Yeah. But I don't think you're going to get to where the ship is with this. Not it's it'll be close enough. Three We'll, we'll give it like 20 minutes and then we'll get going. Oh, okay. So my DVL is all messed up again. Okay. Yeah, you started to drift when, you turn, when the ship started turning. Oh, well, that's it. Yeah. That's because the ship's changing its heading, so the USBL is. You can see the classic. So the ship it. should be pivoting on the A frame, right? Not the bow? No. Uh, you don't get that with this boat. You get oh. You get. Don't throw a fit. I'm not. I'm just asking questions because <laughs> oh, I don't look at know. That. Look, it's the proboscis that I was talking about. You see that white thing? Like yeah. a sticky hand? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Once yeah. we get That's close it. to it, it's going to suck right into that hole. It does kind of look like it's got a thumb there, too. Go ahead and zoom in, video. So it's like crawled out of that hole. So you're saying as soon as we get to, uh, close to it, it's going to like suck in? It, yeah, usually it sucks in. Once it feels the ROV, it goes, oh no, disturbance in the force. <laughs> and it goes into the hole. Let's see that. Go wide video. Let's see if we can get a video of just saying, uh, retreat. Slurping. <laughs> retreat. So this must be a pretty new burrow. You don't see that um, spoke pattern. And this animal is quite large. Because this is just its mouth that you're seeing. Yeah, uh. The rest of it's in that hole. Really? Yeah. It just bounced off bottom for some reason. DVL. Yeah, here, I'll send a reset for you. It's still not... Uh, nope. There it's going. There, it, there goes. it goes. That is the funniest dang thing. <laughs> oh, it's not sucking it. There, there it is. It's going oh, in. We going. Zoom in. I, it's, I can't. We'll lose it. Well, I'm trying to there we go. chase it. <laughs> well, oh, Danny. <laughs> Touch. Take hand off of joystick. <laughs> huh. Oh, no, let's let's give it a few more minutes so that the vehicles can settle out. Pilot, the peanut classic, worm, you said? Classic pilot-induced oscillations. 
<laughs> I'm like trying to fight it like a fighter pilot, but I keep forgetting that I am literally in space. Yeah, you're floating in space. And it's 5,000 pounds. Yes. It doesn't move that fast, even if it had 200 horsepower. That was pretty cool, though. That was cool. Yeah. That one took a long time to suck in. Normally, they just go bloop. This really wants me to go play, uh, go get my Star Citizen out again and start flying in space. But the controls you just, you are very... You have to fly super very slow in space, though. No, the controls are very similar. Like, oh, Did yeah. you ever play Asteroids? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot like that. I spent. Uh, I used to be able to turn that game over. I could play it as long as I wanted, on one quarter. I didn't have the attention span. Wasn't fan. like that in the beginning, but. Well, that was like your only option back then. I gotta get going because I've got to Atlanta. You got You're Atlanta. gonna. What's our bearing gonna be? Uh, to this waypoint, uh, one one four. So. If I turn Atlanta to 114, you'll have a new box. Oh, look, the ship's on 1142. Yeah, that's because that's where we're going. We're going to go together, whether you like it or not. What is he? Just turn the pointy in. You have a sonar target out there in front of you, too. I do. It's a crab. Oh, look at that guy. <laughs> He's his You're own target. You're not going that way. You're going to go that way. Yeah. You've got a fish above you, too. Bottom, bottom, <laughs> bottom, That's a dirty crab. Sure is. Let's see Needs his a face. Bath. There's our fish. He's your friends. <laughs> and those ones are not good for food. Yeah, they're kind of jellyish. Yeah, there were some grad students that tried it out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they said it, they did not recommend. So my new heading is going to be 114? Yep. I think I'll call the it to 114. we're pretty much there, right? Yeah, yeah, the ship's there, and we'll get going once you're ready. So if Atalanta actually had like four thrusters, could you push the wire to get it back, uh, get it uh, to a not, destination quicker? Not really, no. No? So it wouldn't help? We had uh, 75 horsepower TMSs with two big subatlantic thrusters on them and didn't work. That wire is heavy. Yeah. It's All right, you settled in, you ready to go? Working on it. Okay, you just let me know. Atlanta still pulling me. Not. You can uh, start moving the ship. I guess. Yep. Yeah. Bridge now. All right, we're ready to get going. <laughs> yep, take us there. P 
Pete, are you able to bump in the the videos so we don't see those dongles at the bottom? Yeah, we can go back to transect uh, mode, Pete. Yep, I'll dial it in. Thank you. And uh, uh, Iris is there. Focus. And let me get my bearings here. That looks good. So, Iris and Focus are exactly where they were. And zoom. Uh, you can do the final tweaks on your heading with the with this function here. Let's do a couple. Okay. A few. Oops, wrong way. But you get it. Heading point. Takes a minute to update. Yep, one one zero. I'm looking for one one four. That should do it there. That looks like we're gonna be it. Okay, so we can say it's officially starting. Uh, ship started. We're waiting for Atlanta okay. there. I want to just give it an audio cue. Oh yeah, Atlanta's definitely got a long ways to go before we can get going. Yep. Okay. Huh? Oh, we're ready. Sorry, I stopped and took a drink and forgot to turn my mic back on. It happens. I'm having too much fun. I'm glad you're having fun. You get to zoom so many cool animals. Now I get to go home and play with Lu and hopefully get a pilot Lua car. Yeah. Then come back here in a few months and learn how to drive again. I kind of wish we went, we didn't have the stem seas cruise because I would have loved to go to Northwest Hawaiian Islands with, uh, with Herc. Oh, yeah, no, that's what we were supposed to do. And it was going to be so much fun. And I was going to see all my favorite animals. I mean, I'll still see them all. I just have to wait and annotate them later. But last year's cruise was just so crazy dense with organisms. There's, there was a couple dives where you couldn't even see the ground. Well, I think they're going to be wreck diving, right? You're going to be going and checking out some wrecks too, right? What's that? Uh, when you guys go up into the Papahanao Moku Okea this summer. I have no idea. I heard I heard a rumor about that, some, some wreck dives. Um, they're definitely going to do some wrecks uh, in the uh, November cruise. Bob Ballard's oh. Um, oh. cruise thing. I'm I'm on that one. Yeah, yeah, that one should be cool. I Are you on that one? Yep. I don't have anything going on in November. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, so I was, I was like thinking about trying to get on I'm that on one. That but one too. We'll be on that one unsupervised. Oh Sweet. Unsupervised. <laughs> Dan, if you need another pilot, then we can really talk turkey. Actually, I'm going to be the lead for that one. We'll have some hardware to play with, too. Yeah. You know, pilot, I have nothing going on in November. I'm sure you'll have stuff going on. Nope. No, nope. you're like, no, I'm making making room. Yep. Yeah. Well, I you guess it'll to. really depend on if I end up going on that Nat Geo cruise or not. You're talking to the wrong person there. Yeah, I gotta go talk to Josh. Yeah. I think they already have everybody picked out. Well, you never know what happens. Someone might you get COVID. Yeah, you never know. That's how I ended up here. Yeah, that's how Josh, uh, that's how Jake ended up in the pilot seat instead of a navigator seat. He's probably having a lot more fun piloting. <laughs> I 
Not that the nav navigating isn't interesting. <laughs> All right, we want to call this start a transect. Analyze is starting to move. Yeah, we can get going. Unless you want to wait a little longer, Dan. Uh, well, uh, uh, science needs to know when we start. Yeah. Whenever Danny pushes a step forward button there a few times. Here we go. All right. And we're marking the time too, right? How long to how far to the waypoint, Megan? It's a kilometer. Uh, I'd push it nine more times. Oh god. What's that? Oh, I see what's going on. It's going negative. To go one thousand five yep. meters. One thousand four meters. Okay, so we've officially started. Yeah, start okay. a transit. Thank you. Here we go. One more you time. You might have to uh, slow down. Uh, you might have to tweak it to point one for in the beginning here. We'll see. I think you're all right. Might be a little close. We'll see. That's why I was going to wait until Atlanta was almost mid screen, but. I haven't moved Atlanta's really camera either, but it's looking trippy straight now. down. Like the light uh, reflecting on one side it's of it. About a box ahead of Atlanta. Yeah, three boxes. It starts to. You'll get a little. Uh, depending on the weather, and the bounce of the ship, you'll get a little. So should I bump it to one five? Well, I don't know. You could. Get maybe just a little more bow in the tether there, so I'll let it catch up a little bit more. Sounds good. Does bubble have focus? Yeah. yeah. Can you change the focus on that, see if you can point it down further away? Huh? Yeah, that's, that's not, not that's very not controllable helping. focus. Okay. So it's like really focused on the front porch, but it won't look past that. Mm. That better? Uh, it didn't help, but it's still focusing on like things that are a few feet in front of it. Yeah, it's, um, it's a 1990s pan tilt camera. It, <laughs> uh, it's all good. Auto focuses. Oh. Yeah. Take it out of okay. focus. Okay. I don't know why that. There's a function here for it, but I can't get it to work. No, it's locked in on the camera. <coughs> it's just locked in on manual. You gotta focus, you gotta hold it. See? That's like adjusting iris there. That one is. Did I get any better? No. Oh, you're just focusing all the way out there. Focusing all the way in. But then it's, I think as soon as you let go of it, it goes back to autofocus. That's fine. I'm not sure. I don't know. It's probably the way the lights are blasting that debris. Biomass. That's better. Yeah. Oh, that that right there, great. That's a great view. Oop. OK. 
Okay, I won't right. touch it. You yeah. get about two or three clicks and iris, and then it takes off. <laughs> yeah, it does. It is anybody looking at this, or can I no, put a different source into it? You put okay. whatever source the only you thing want. we record is this. The uh, rest is this black box. Yeah, yeah oh. I wasn't sure if anybody's on the satellite looking at. It. Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, you can uh, you can put band cam. You could do back deck. Well, yeah. No, I just was wondering for the transect if this was needed. I don't think that's part of the deliverable. That okay. camera. Okay. I don't know that e for sure. I think it's it not. just records it in a quad in the black box, just in case. Uh, like, uh, if you're asking whether or not we get Atalanta video at all? No, this is the SAT-3 that was going out, which is the uh, uh, bubble cam pointing down, but it's unusable right now. I so. think, oh, yeah. Well, I think you guys get Atalanta video. We definitely yeah. do, yeah. yeah. We get Atalanta, the two main recordings, yeah. uh, Atalanta and Zeus, and yeah. then you've got the quads for engineering purposes. But I don't think those go out. Uh, no. That's a deliverable. I had this black box as those. That'd be a really, uh, yeah, no, I'm just saying really from satellite. Video. Oh, for the recording. satellite. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. oh. I heard that ONC is recording satellites too, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I think that one's at your discretion. I think you should uh, just turn the camera on right here that's aiming at uh, Dan. Just. Or not. <laughs> I tried to get one camera in our control van, and I had so much backlash. Oh, I know. Yeah, there's uh, at least four in here. Five, six. Seven. Probably nine. There's at least six. I can count six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Counting the camera in the studio. There's two. Yeah, there's a bunch. Yeah, I think there's yeah. six counting the studio camera. Technically eight. Eight? Yep. Yeah, we have band one through four, pilot, science, studio one, studio two. One through four. What is it? There's one there, one there. One on the back, one above us. Well, yeah. there, there's not a big one in the back. Oh, yeah, there is. The big one's standing right at you. Yeah. Then you got this guy and that guy. And well, let's go through them. What the heck? That so guy. There we have one. It's of you guys. There's two. That's the down. Hands free. There's three. There's kind of a cross shot. I kind of like that yeah, one. Yeah, that's the one we up and have up. There's the co-pilot. It says pilot. Yeah, it's supposed to be pilot. There's a weird thing on the screen. Hey. It's supposed to be uh, looking at the narcissist too. Uh, is that seaweed? But I don't, anyways. I don't know what that is. Uh, I think weird. we have it moved so Danny can do the... Looks like rotting seaweed to me. There's science. Yeah, but we're really far away to be Studio getting some one. of that. Studio um, two, which is not looking or at not. Anything, so. I can't remember if it's Barkley or Cascadia. One of, one of these places the get, has on you can see all the get like uh, yeah. quite a bit cool of seaweed up. going, like falling down through the, the water column. Hmm, interesting. Thought I saw one of those squat lobsters that buries itself. So we're doing transects. They don't even have the still cam doing transects, do they? The still cam should be set up to take a photo every, like, 10 seconds. I don't think they have it set up for that. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. You don't get very good uh, stills during the, while it's moving. Oh, really? No, you should have seen our still cam. They had, we had flashes we had to put on, oh, like great. old school flashes on the, on the brow bar. The then. quality was amazing because I annotated all those pictures. Yeah. Well, not all of them. Yeah, I annotated a majority uh, of the pictures. If you have strobes and have it tweaked to... There's a bird. 
fire. It's old too. It's a 2005, and it does really good video uh, pictures. You can put the still cam on, take time photos. But it's better when it's down low on the porch. You get some yeah, we usually have ours on the bow bar, and it comes with this big old bottle with the strobes and timer, and you have to set it all up and then close the Yeah, mid. it's got like this ancient DSLR in it. It's great. So on Capture PC, you'll see what's going on here. We're grabbing Hurricane Zeus uh, every 60 seconds. Okay, yeah. Every what? 60 seconds. And Sea Dog probably grabs every so often too, right? Um, I don't think they have Sea Log set up to do that since they're already doing it. There's gotcha. no need to do oh, that's a double. How we got log. Yeah, that's how we have our C-Log set up. Now, C-Log does capture images. So like yeah. every time you have a thing. We could probably bump it to but uh, I don't think we, we don't have the, um, the, the ASNAPS toggle on. Oh, it is on. Never mind. Okay, it is on. So it is doing it. Go see long. Is that a shadow or a speck on on our field of view? It's a speck. Okay. Hmm, I wonder where that came from. Yeah, it's recent. Bugs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had a bug. Bio fouling. Yeah, the the sea log takes a photo every ten seconds. That's what they have set to. No, we didn't launch this, so. Blame the window cleaner. <laughs> you know, it takes a long time going through all those photos after the dive. Oh, I bet. Because there's too many. <laughs> I haven't noticed that spec before. Has it been there? No, that's brand new. It's it recent. just showed up. Oh, we must have had a piece of dirt stick there. I'm telling you, we hit a bug. Ooh, look at Atlanta's view. Yeah, a uh, Peralia. Adzeus does make some beautiful pic uh, video for how small of a camera it is. That would be really cool, right where Danny Cam is. <laughs> we could. Put an Ethernet connector in the back of it, and the eye out of it. Oh, it's just... Put, uh, uh, put it into the spare fiber. I've had it on there before and the 4K running up a separate fiber. So. They tried the 4K on Argus at first and had, I don't know what they had for the settings, but they were getting a lot of artifacts and tearing, so they looked at it for five minutes and deemed it You'll hear Ed say you can't get good image out of a $30,000 camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I can't even argue with that. If you guys yeah. don't want it, we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I had it on um, uh, Hercules year before last, and we did a bunch of we're doing a bunch of tests with it, and I had was running the uh, the Visca software for it instead of that silly controller that DSPL, the prototype controller we have. Yeah. And I thought it was fine. Yeah, you would get some tearing if it moved really fast, but we put it in 1080p mode. You could probably was, run it off of one of these it uh, was fine. ATEMs. What's that? Oh, off of one of these camera controllers. I ran controllers. it off of the Visco yeah. FCB software. Yeah, uh, that Sony's software is a little uh, goofy, but it's got way more controls than I know how to work. But oh, it does, but it doesn't save any of them. As soon as you power it off, it all gone. We had uh, the one of the video guys is a shutter bug, and he knew what all those settings did. He had it tweaked. It was a beautiful camera getting this awesome images like I was with the stereo camera looking down. I could see, you know, meters below the vehicle and the whole front of the vehicle. 
how how how, how I wide? Was, I was told to take it off. And how wide is the uh, view on that? Is it? It not as obviously as wide as that, but, but it would be better now that the bumper bar is a little taller. I'd have more of a wider view. Mm. It would be. But the 4K. It, it might is not fiber, be a right? great camera compared to that, but compared to that, it was awesome. Oh yeah. For a pilot camera, you know, it was I've flown with a lot worse. Well, I was gonna say you guys have enough functions. Uh, we have these little hydraulic pan and tilts. We've got like six of them in a box. Yeah, the problem with it wasn't the image out of it. It was that the scientists want to record 4K video, and we don't have a process set up to deal with that. It's a whole no. lot of data. Oh yeah, lots of data. And, you know. You so, yeah, the problem is the first thing they say is, can we record that? <laughs> They're like, sure, there you go. Don't tell them it's 1080. They won't know the difference. No, no, we just don't have the workflow set up to, so it's not just putting a camera on the vehicle, it's... Um, Recording. Yeah. yeah, so somebody has to manage the settings in the camera, how it looks, what, what Pete's doing now with the Zeus, and then someone yeah. has to ensure that the recording is actually recorded and then someone has to process that data and um, wrap it all up into a deliverable. Um, we weren't set up to do that. Through lots of shootouts, tests, uh, through lots of shootouts and tests and blind, blind taste tests, air quotes, taste test, yeah. um, not sh telling people what was what um, 1080p 60 with HDR often was considered to be equal to 4K. Yep. Because you need to be 1.5 times the diagonal distance of your screen away to for your eyeball to resolve 4K. All right. So in other words, if you have a 17-inch screen, anything past 25 or 26 inches or whatever that 1.5 ratio is you, yeah, you can't tell from the screen you yeah. can't tell the difference yeah so uh, 1080p with HDR holy cow yeah for me looking at it in one of the I still suspect part of the issue was you know it's got to convert it's got to down convert and then go through the multi viewer And 4K takes six times the data storage <coughs> yeah, than, we were than HD. We were only allowed to do like, I don't know, 30 second or 10 second bursts of recording yeah. or something like that. It was, yeah, it was, I didn't want it for any of that. I just wanted it for a pilot camera. It's different with a you know, a commercial ROV, I can put whatever camera I want on it, but, you know, <laughs> they record black box, but half the time they don't, you know, they're not record doing stuff like this, unless we're doing a survey, but then at that point they have dedicated cameras set up for a survey. Yeah, and you can always bring in a 4K feed and down convert it to a 1080p. And that the can camera be your has a setting in it to run it at 1080p. I say run it at 4K, and then just record it for the 99.9% .9 of the time in 1080p. But those moments when you do need a 12, uh, yeah. you know, 12G signal, you know, you've got that elsewhere in your system. So it's we went through the same curve when HD cameras first came out. It was the same thing. We would do highlights in HD. So, and it was a lot of work for the uh, people, you know, starting and stopping, and then having to tie those small sections into that part of the dive and all the deliverables. Right? You can't just start it and stop it. You got to know when you start it, when you stop it, and that all has to be tied into the ROV position. And it was a huge amount of work, and it. I remember the first time we went out on a job, we, 
we didn't bring nearly enough hard drives. <laughs> so we were like rationing hard drive space so we could still record highlights and not run out of hard drives before the end of the expedition. Uh, we gave like scientists would walk off with a <laughs> suitcase full of uh, back then they were, I don't know, what, you know, 200 gig hard drives or something like that. Or no, they were 500. Which they probably only needed one point, you know, less than 1% of that content. Doesn't matter. Scientists want it all. Yeah, they want to record everything. Well, you never know when you might see something cool. Exactly. We had someone wanting a, wanting a copy of our Teva cam, which literally looks like that 95% of the time. They're like, all right. It's like the chance you might see something in that is something it, it's, it's a It's a nano C cam, so you know how good a quality it is. Yeah, a little <laughs> teeny one. Yeah. Yeah. That's where AI and machine learning can help. Sorry, Megan. I'm not. <laughs> no, no, Megan's right. Uh, but, but, you know, for a lot of that, it could be relegated to a computer. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, if you see something and then, like, it's a text and then it records. Yeah, but. And, and the computers are getting pretty decent at detecting stuff. It doesn't know what it's detecting. It was like, it's different. Yeah, trigger it. <laughs> and then yeah, a human goes and looks at it. Mm hmm. Well, that technology is relatively new in the scheme of yeah i mean like it's just starting to get dialed in where detection is something that we can do but identification we're still a long ways away but there's so many different things to identify and you see them from different angles um, like computers can't quite do it right. I think they could do it good enough for outreach video, though. Fish. Fish, yeah. Sea star. Mud. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, maybe. Rock. Coral. I mean, it still doesn't do it great, like, because Google has an image <laughs> search things. now for, Fluffy like, thing. things that, like, already have images on the Internet. You're like, find me this sweater that I saw. So, you know, Tim, our data guy. Mm -hmm. Um he uh, wrote a script that annotates the video right after the dive based on what the uh, data logger puts in. Okay. And we have a lot of intern data loggers, so we get some just hilarious, you know, white fluffy thing. Or <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> so, and his script annotates the video and then he plays it on the screen in the mess. <laughs> and you can see every annotation that the data logger made. Oh, man. <laughs> like, and I, I think it takes them a day or so to run it, but the uh, it's classic Tim <laughs> sense of humor. I think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I can I always I'll sit there at dinner and just cracking up. <laughs> White fluffy thing. <laughs> <laughs> Fish, or it will say coral on rock. <laughs> on rock. Oh, or they try to spell the thing that I say. <laughs> well, I, I don't like, know. <laughs> yeah, it's complete with uh, misspellings and everything. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you say some of the things you say. Um, see, the thing is, you don't know if I'm saying it wrong, so... <laughs> <laughs> you just sound correct. <laughs> I just... S sound it out. <laughs> I'm like, it's Latinish, so we're just like, ah, oh, you know, sound it out. I but then other people pronounce things differently. Like family names always end in a e, and so I always pronounce it a. Some people don't pronounce it like that. I like a orgeous conicus. Some some people say e, and some people say a. So. Well, the Canadians say A. Hey. A, <laughs> yeah.
Officer Pope and manual now. I like how your Zeus has like an auto white balance uh, trigger on it. Your mini Zeus, does that actually work? I don't know, I never use it. I forget what they do. It'd be nice to white balance our camera. One push, white balance. Press what? down to activate. Oh, wow. So Dave apparently does that, Ed was telling me. Dave does that. And White balances it. Yeah, Ed just says, just leave it full auto, let it be, and then white balance the Herc Zoo, so. Yeah, well, the Atalanta view is just going to be blue no matter what you do, so. <laughs> yeah, but so the camera that Atalanta has is our main camera. But they're we good, don't have a push to. Good cameras. I've operated several ROVs with that. It's no. the main camera. No, the uh, Mini Zeus is a great camera. Ours is just 20 years old. Time for an update. But it's a smaller RV, so it's, you know, like a meter or two away from what you're looking at. Well, the camera that's in the main Zeus, her camera, is a 20-year-old technology. That's not a young camera either. No. But it works really but well. But that was a way higher-end camera than yes. the little box, Sony FC-10 Box cam, um, box cam. Well, box cameras are the same guts as a as a big boy camera. It's the same electronics. It just doesn't have the all of the gack that's on oh, the escape, outside. Oh, escape, yeah. escape, <laughs> flap, flap. Oh, that guy. I was reading something the other night about uh, subsea photography for <coughs> for divers. It was a website recommending cameras and lenses. And it's pretty common for uh, d dive divers to have a diopter in their camera if they're using a rectilinear lens. It said uh, if you're using a fisheye, do typically do not need a diopter. I feel the like we passed this in an enemy before. <laughs> <laughs> we've passed one that looked just like it. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, we're seeing repeats of animals. Typically, you can get away with a smaller dome. On a fisheye, yeah. If you were to do small cameras, fisheye I mean, look, lens. I mean, look at the dome on the on the Zeus. I mean, that thing is huge. Yeah, same with that cinema camera that Sexton built. The reason they went to the bigger nine-inch dome was uh, because of the lens. That's why the little, uh, this little camera, the corners are relatively sharp. It's got a yeah. fisheye lens, a little dome. But that's perfect for what it's for. Yeah. Like, even if you got an updated version of that camera, that would be amazing. In that housing, it, yeah, it would be. Yeah. For a tooling camera, for what we're using it for, it would be. Same That's with our the, uh, middle uh, lipstick cameras, you know, if we stick one of those inside of a lipstick camera. That's what the DSPL Sea Light cameras are. Yeah. They're all HD cameras and those size housings. For tuning cameras, they're brilliant. Have uh, on Sebastian have, and uh, I copied from D2. They have one in each corner, just under those armpit lights, mm -hmm. and they can control uh, the light separate from the camera. So if you want a good image from one, you have you turn the light by the camera off and have the other light coming in at 45, but it's just absolutely brilliant doing uh, Manipberg. You have three views all the time. Well, you have four actually. You have an upper and a lower, and then the two on the side. I think uh, Jason set up the same way. I was reading up on the history of Jason. It's pretty fascinating. <laughs> the vehicle? Yeah. Yeah, there's some. And Elvin, too. Yeah. I heard there's a pretty good book published on the history of those 
Someone was mentioning it last cruise. For Alvin, the ingot, the titanium ingot that they had delivered was 70,000 pounds or something like that. It was a huge, massive, just solid piece of titanium that they carved out rings that stacked on top of each other, and that's what created the yeah, enclosure. They, uh, They used a very special welding process for that. Um, the fusion bonding. I believe so, something like that. The same way they are. Uh, in a complete in a chamber. Same way the plates are made on the... Uh, I don't know if they used a fusion bonding on there, but I'm imagining that's how they're made on the Titan, all the manifold plates on the arm. They'll just buy a big sheet of aluminum and a uh, sheet of titanium and cut it out like you would yeah, aluminum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how the ones on Alvin were welded. There's a whole video about it. There's a whole documentary about uh, the new uh, new deal, uh, sphere. Then they had to send it to Germany to be pressure tested. Their tolerances were like, I don't know what the, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but they were like 0 0.03 or something millimeters. And they beat that by a factor of oh, yeah. 10 or something. Like they were so tight on their tolerances everywhere. It was incredible. I mean, I do tolerances 0 0.0002 in inches. So that's a uh, tenth of a thousandth of an inch. That's the tolerance uh, four decimal places in the wrist, the gear rotor wrist for the Titan. Yeah. That's Tight, tight machining tolerances. Swiss clock. I'm surprised there isn't a Swiss made uh, manipulator on. Hmm. What's that? I'm surprised there's not a Swiss made uh, manipulator on. Is there? There was a French one for a while. Uh, not the French. The Swiss. <laughs> Big difference. Swiss were no, known are uh, known for their super extreme tolerances on their uh, machining cross practices. Uh, same with um, Germany. Uh, Germans have amazing tolerances. Their ability to create precision instruments is absolutely unbeatable. Swiss watch in a German automobile. Yeah. <laughs> You have no excuse if you're late to work. If you have a Swiss watch and a German automobile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what's they that? Look garbage. You know what'd be fun to dive on? The rock, uh, the rocket, uh, rocket graveyard in the Atlantic. <laughs> where they, you know, where all the first stages go go back after they've uh, been used. Yeah. You know how many thousands of rocket parts would be down there? It'd be a really interesting dive. That's the engineer in me. Uh, you guys get excited over fish, I get excited over mechanical things. <laughs> I, I want to go dive the automobile junkyard in Hawaii. Saw some of the photos. I heard about that. It's really cool. There's some really cool footage. And like some of the cars are completely covered in like these stars. And yeah, I saw some of the pictures when uh, Terry and Chris were out here. Mm -hmm. And uh, Terry was telling stories of uh, training, training there in Pisces. They had like a run that they would do, and they would bring one Pisces in, and then the other one would come in, and the first one would peel off and come around behind, and cover. It. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. 
Yeah, they found a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, people are interested in seeing all the cool stuff that Hurl has ever seen, both the Pisces subs. Um, there's a, the Hurl Archive, the Hawaii Undersea Research Laboratory Archive. Um, that's a website that I created to sort of showcase all of the data that Hurl has collected over their 30 plus years of... Is that on the Hurl website? I made a new website. So the old Hurl website still kind of exists, um, but I changed all the wording to past tense because Hurl is no longer operational. Right. But the archive is active and you can download the video and metadata from every dive really? that they have ever done, uh, including CTD, if it was available, tracking, pick photos. It's publicly available? It's publicly available. Oh, you have to send me the link. I will. And it also has an animal guide and a guide to the maritime heritage archives. So all of these ships and cars and planes, submarines, and other various items that we've come across on the seafloor off the coast of Oahu uh, are uh, recorded there. Huh. Here's our favorite gummy squirrel. <sighs> yeah. Oh, what look are, how and happy those it are is. at depths up to? Um, the, the wrecks? Uh, there's some that are deeper, like 800 meters, 900 meters, depends on the wreck. But most of them are shallower just because we could see them in the side scan. Right. So generally, Terry and uh, Steve would identify, and same with Chris, like identify these targets in the side scan sonar and choose those locations as the um, training dive site and uh, certification dive sites for the subs every year. So. They basically found these items while they were doing their their dives that were required for safety and training. All right. Those are just out of the range of like a Blue Robotics ROV, right? They're just not. Uh, well, it depends on which wreck. to a thousand meters range. But are there some that are shallower? Oh yeah, there's some that are shallower. There's a bunch that's that are shallow. Our top uh, site's 400 meters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, still out outside of the range of a stock Blue Robotics vehicle. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, it's also a lot of this stuff is off of Barbara's Point, so yeah. recreational people may get frowned upon a little bit. But why is that? Because military? Or? Yeah, there's a lot of military stuff out there, and, and you also may happen upon uh, munitions. And oh yeah, there's a bunch of munitions out there. Yeah. yeah. So Hurl did a number of surveys for munitions over the years. But aren't, aren't most of the munitions really inert after that time? I think so, bit? yeah. Mm. But, you know, I don't know a lot about these things. Most is not enough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would be some great ROV video. Of blowing up your ROV. Yeah. <laughs> a blue ROV it could be... Probably uh, worth it. It'd be totally wonderful. worth it. If you could, if you... Yeah. Let's not blow up Hercules, so. Yeah, let's not do that. Um, I mean, there is But the navigators he on the ship do have access to those positions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, for, for planning purposes, right. for wreck dives. Are there people doing recreational dives to those sites? No, no, no. But like, for, for Hercules to do dives on oh, these yeah. wrecks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for the ones that are, are shallower, yeah, there are people that do dives right. um, off the coast of Oahu. There, there's a Corsair that you can dive on. There is an LRT. Um, there's a, a ship. There's, there's a number of wrecks that are just offshore within recreational diving um, depths. And so people who visit Oahu and are interested, um, most of the dive shops do offer wreck dives. That's something you're interested in. Most of those dives are deep, um, like 90 to 100 feet. Yeah. So you don't get a lot of time on the wreck. 
Unless you got it all of you. Yeah. Anything deeper than I can hold my breath too deep for me. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Upside, the water is so clear, you can just be on the boat and you can see it from yeah, the surface. You can fly a drone over Floating the around on the surface. You can fly the drone over and get a survey of the, uh, of the wreck. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can actually find some of them on Google Maps, the shallow stuffs. Yeah. yeah. So that would be fun, doing those with a blue robotics ROV. Oh yeah. Pleasure boat. Just say the word and we'll do it. Make it happen. I'm trying to get Antonella to. She had her vehicle over in Hawaii and then she shipped it back home again. Yeah. Oh. She didn't want to pay for all the storage everywhere. I'm trying to convince uh, Flying Glazer, who has a Blue Robotics Heavy in a box to uh, dispose of it. Because <laughs> his students keep flooding it and causing it to so much pain. Oh, poor thing. Well, that's what happens when you have, you know, undergrads working on uh, submersible vehicles and they have no idea what they're doing, because that's not their specialty. Well, they need to have the guidance of someone who knows what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. well, you know how PIs are. Hmm. You get a grant to buy it, and... Uh, like, really here's your new toy. Here's your new toy, and oh, it broke. Oh, well, now it sits in a box and never to be seen again. I keep looking for one of those on eBay. I can't find it. Really? Yeah, I used Blue Robotics ROV. You think that would be I on stole eBay? Your pen, AJ. Yeah, I don't want to spend the money on a new one. I want one that's half broken because they're gonna. Right. Yeah. Like most of the parts are still good. You get like two or three like cheap is. broken ones, and you're like, boop, yeah, brand new totally. to one. Yeah. I can modi modify the heck out of it anyway. So. All right. Unstrap it, Hercules, and. Oh. Time is upon us. Yeah, can we mark the end of the survey and stop here? Uh, oh, we'll uh, just keep it going. We got it. We got. Well, there, we've got a long way to get back. We might as well just keep going at our current speed. No, we're gonna go faster. We can't go faster. We're going as fast as we can go. For a transector period. We're going 0.3 knots. That's the fastest the ship can go. That's uh, the fastest for not hurting the tether. Well. We could go a little we point five. No, we can drag. We can drag hook. We just have to go blue water. Yeah, we'll go blue water. Okay. Well, we're gonna do a handoff, and then uh, you guys can figure it out. Yeah. So, are you stopping here? Um. Yeah, I can stop the ship. Uh, but it would probably be easier just to keep it going, because if we stop the ship, that it's gonna take us longer to go get going. Yeah, let's just and I could just ask them to speed up once the ROVs are off the bottom. What is yeah, that? Yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah, right? Keep the ship going then. This will be we'll fine. And the what transect. is that? We'll mark right. the end of the transect. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. What is it? It looks oh. like a propeller. Or yeah, something. that is wild. That looks like part of a helicopter. It is part of a helicopter. <laughs> it is. That's a real uh, tailboat to do a helicopter. Might be a good place to stop and check it out. Well, the transect's over, so we can go have a look as long as Atlanta doesn't pull us. Well, Atlanta's not going to stop for a while. It's going to keep pulling us. Yeah, all right.
See ya. Um? Yeah, I guess so. Alright, so yeah. So what's the, what's the plan here? Jeez. So, transect's over, so we're going to head back to the mooring. We're going okay. to survey. Mooring? Uh -huh. All right there. So the connector to the junction box was cleared. What we want to do is make sure that the connector between straw yellow and uh, straw blue. Hold on a sec, AJ. Yeah. First step is get there? Well, I'm just trying to work through what way we want to get there. Like what, well, a, what our approach should be. We can uh, just get there yeah, and okay. then plan the approach later. Sure. We were transiting slow for transect, but we can go to warp speed now? Yeah. Okay, let's Definitely. go. How fast are we moving? Point three? Point three. Let's go to one. Okay, one knot. Do you guys want to pull up bottom? Nope, it's flat. Okay. Bridge nav. Apparently we just passed a helicopter piece. Yeah. What? Yeah, we did. Yeah, like we did. just about yeah. four minutes ago. Dave, what was the indicator that that was a piece of a helicopter? Just the construction of it. Okay. It certainly looked, the glance I got, it certainly looked like it. Wait, he wants to stop the ship first? No, not stopping. Yeah, he's going to stop and change his heading. <sighs> Maybe we should stay the course. Stopping is not what we should do. I mean, he can't change his head in on the move. I guess not. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah whatever he does, let's get as fast there without stopping. <coughs> too late. You can hear it. Yeah. It's already, is it too late? Or to point five or whatever, whatever you can do. Yeah, you're right. I think that's what the issue is: is he can't go in the direction he needs to go at one knot. Yeah, that's fine. We can just go whatever whatever speed he gets. Yeah. I can feel it. <laughs> Sorry, AJ, you were saying. So, there's two oily cables that we need to sort of be aware of. There's one that runs from the IP to the straw oh. yellow, which is the one that we're recovering. And there's one that runs from yellow to blue, which is the one we recovered yesterday. We recovered a cable yesterday? We recovered a mooring yesterday. Oh, yes. The one that runs between the IP and straw yellow was unplugged and cleared out of the way this morning. And I, we just want to sort of maybe get, we should see how far it was cleared. Probably wasn't cleared very far, which is fine. It'll just lay on the seabed forever, as long as we don't drag anything over it. The one that runs from straw yellow around to the northwest, that's the one we're going to want to bring up with the sub. Okay. So we have two options. We could either pop the mooring, wait for it to come up, then go get it, and then bring it up how we like. Mm. But if we want to make sure that we don't have to pack the ship into the mooring or anything like that, then we probably want to orient the ship in such a way that we can recover it on our way up. So yes. we probably want the ship oriented such that it's clearing away from the mooring to the northwest. Yeah, agreed. Okay. Let me, uh, what do we got here? Uh, that's wrong. Sorry. We're on DP port. What? Nope. I'm a liar. Uh, <coughs> so you're saying that, it's hard to read with all these little words here, we have, yeah, please. <laughs> what color straw are we recovering this morning? Yellow. Really Yellow. 202307, 20, okay. And we did the other one down that one, okay. Yeah, remember if the heading of the ship's changed, I don't have a lot of faith in these markers anymore. No, for sure. Just the general... Um, <coughs> yeah, the relative positions, yeah. So, if we are facing uh, northwest, 
we pop the moor and the ship's heading is uh, southeast and we pop the mooring the ship starts transiting southeast and we kind of back up and over like the 45 degree kind of thing towards the southeast backing towards the straw one location is that the right plan is that what you're thinking no 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 i think you're here i'll come down there yeah so it's easier Megan. Hi. Yeah. There are a couple questions about if you recorded the location of that part that we saw. No. Okay, so. I did. Oh, you did? But that's on Ocean Networks Canada's infrastructure. Mm. Yeah, because I guess the question is, like, where's the rest of it? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, at least I got a timestamp, so you can go back to the footage, mm. and the footage that Ocean Networks Canada receives from OET is open captioned, so it'll have the lats and longs mm -hmm. embedded into the video. In case someone is interested in that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Well, there's one of those acorn worms. Mm -hmm. We saw some cool stuff on our transect. Yeah. 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 New gauges here. And then when we were off transect, oh. we saw. Um, a peanut worm in its uh, burrow with its proboscis all the way out, and then we uh, disturbed it just enough so it would pull it in. It was fun. <laughs> it was really cool. And of course it happened right when we were off transect. Yeah, it was yeah. perfect time for that to happen. So just since I had just talked about it, I'm like, I hope we see one, and there it was. It was cool. great. I manifested it. <laughs> yeah. Where we got to go to the site. Um, so I'm Roughly. gonna have the ship stop around here, and uh, that's about 280 meters. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. and then Closer than we thought. then the ship's gonna change heading, and we'll wait for the vehicles to swing and. Yeah. Okay. Go. Cool. Yeah. 
Now, Trevor, um, should we wait for the vehicles to swing into position before we change the ship's heading, or does it matter? Okie dokie. <laughs> since it, it's going to be a drastic change since we're going to do like a 180 with the ship <laughs> yeah I was like mm, that, that's a little intense Power slide. <laughs> okay. That's fair. <laughs> Instead of like, all right, let's just whew, flip them around. <laughs> Is there a reason why we couldn't do the transects at this speed? It depends on what the scientist wants. They want oh, specific okay. speeds and altitudes and all kinds of things. That's fair, I guess. So we'll go right down to the angle of the camera and yeah, the yeah, that makes sense. of the light. Yeah. yeah, we had requested a speed of 0.5 and we're told we couldn't achieve it. Oh, okay. Um, no, we were facing the other direction when we were going up, because they were, did a transect away, and then we turned around and came back. But I was just told we had to be 0.3, so. It seems like a nice pace to me. Yeah. Point three is about perfect, really. Gives you time to see things. But if I you mean, have I guess good resolution cameras, right. Sorry, then mean, you're okay, and you can go a bit faster because you cover more ground and you get more water volume through the lens, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a trade-off. It is a trade-off. Yep. It just seems good enough to me for me to identify all these animals. Yeah, you being the one that reviews these videos. Videos, yeah. Like, yeah. this is kind of the speed I watch them at, so. Right. Yeah, you you speed them up. I speed them up. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be sitting there forever. <laughs> and then when we do a sampling event, I'm like, ooh, I can just zoom through this. Well, and you can pause or slow down. Of course. I can pause and slow down when I want to. Live annotating is a little bit more difficult, but we annotating afterwards, I think, is more accurate. Hey, can we please get the DVL reset? Of course. Yeah, see what happens. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah, it's been needing a lot of resets. Yeah. With the transects, absolutely. Yeah. Squirrel. Oh, how many seconds are in 13 minutes? <laughs> All of them. Oh, fair enough. <laughs>
I don't know if you heard that, Megan, but Rennie likes to relieve watch change really close to the margin. Mm -hmm. So we were joking that... Uh, Go ahead, Bridge. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's, we want to stop a bit earlier before this uh, point anyway. So now is a great time to slow down and come to a stop. <coughs> yeah, thank you. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Do you have, does he have a new spot to go to? No. Um. Bridge nav. Um. Please stop whenever you can. Okay. So, that was joking. We were joking that uh, for every second Rennie is late, mm -hmm. he owes one push-up. <laughs> Josh is over 900 now. 900 seconds. It's <laughs> a lot of push-ups. That's what you, why you needed to know how many seconds. And what is the acceptable margin up to the point when you're late? What do you mean? Is it five like minutes? For, for Ren, it's uh, probably about five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Usually people try to show up five minutes early. Yeah, that's what I'm observing. Okay. Yeah. And it's acceptable all the way till the top of the hour. Okay. All right. If you show up at, you know, 59, 59, okay. <laughs> it's cutting it tight. It's cutting it tight, but fair game. Not very, you know, there's going to be a bit of handover into the next watch, which is not usually the best thing, but it's fair game. But when it involves uh, putting your head down on the bed, that is, uh, you know, it's like that extra five minutes helps. <laughs> also helps with not taking it off for five minutes longer. Megan, could you please zoom out on high pack? I just want to see the vehicles relative yeah, sure. to the relative to the ship. Oh yeah, we're way yonder. Yeah, we're we're way back there. So uh, you'll have to be ready on that winch. Yeah, absolutely. Already seeing it a bit. Yeah. So. Hey, AJ. Yeah. Can you please remind me, we have nothing else really all that tall in the region except for this one mooring, right? That's correct. There's this one mooring on the east side of the platform by 50 meters. There's the cork. One and mooring on the east side of the platform? It's a cork. It's a cork. It's oh, a, yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah. Big it's solid like thing that was in a hole. Tall, maybe three we went, we went yeah, we the passed day. it. Yeah. Also, yeah. there's that hydrophone array that's to the northeast, yeah, okay. uh, 60 meters, and I that's, you know, only two meters tall. Nothing tether rappy or anyway. Three meters tall, maybe. No, yeah. nothing tether rappy. We should and be good if we do what we did yesterday. Yeah. Just sit, let it go, give it a couple of minutes, and then just back away. Mm -hmm. Totally. I just mean for the approach. Oh, just right. thinking about it. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. Yeah, approaching from the northwest, there's really nothing but the mooring. Roger that. Thank you. That's, what's that? No sonar. Who knows? We saw Something a crab in there. Under Could be a crab. Crab well, in the sonar. On the yeah. sonar. <laughs> nice. She'll be gone now.
I'm going to speed up a wee bit more, just stay out in front. Roger. Hey. No. I'd love to. What what cabin is he in? Okay, I'll go look it up on the board. Sure, no problem. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> 